During the early days of 1980, a young architecture student traveling alone in Europe came across the construction site of a church in the city of Barcelona because he had heard it would be of some interest. At the time, there was no roof, there were no walls, there was no interior columns. There were merely eight towers, four on each of two portals that were woefully incomplete. Yet, he was instantly captivated. His travel plans changed. He didn't venture beyond the construction site, and an idea occurred to him. No one knew where he was. He could just stay there, hide in Spain, never go back to school, never go back to the United States. Perhaps he could get an apprenticeship as a stone carver and work on that edifice for the next 40 years or the rest of his life. The building seized his heart, his brain, and his soul. He sketched it. He wrote words in a journal, but the words were inadequate to express what he was feeling. The church was imaginative, new, strange, and yet familiar. It was simultaneously organic and unworldly. It was ambitious, almost a total folly. It could never be built as intended, but it had to be built as designed. It was Antonin Gaudi's Sagrada Familia. I was that architecture student so many years ago, and I suspect I'm not the only one who's been seduced by Gaudi's masterwork. Obviously, I returned to architecture school and came home, and I've been an architect practicing for many decades. But I've only recently gone back to Barcelona to see what amazing progress has happened within my lifetime. There are more towers. There are the budding shoots for even more and bigger towers. There are statues. There's a nave. There's gables on the nave. There's organic decoration on the gables on the naves. There are statues among all the organic decoration on the gables on the nave. There are interior columns that stretch up like bones or trees. There are column capitals on those columns. Some of them are illuminated. There's interior statues. There's art glass. There's a vaulted ceiling. There's a cloister. There's one of two dome sacristies already built. And there are more statues. They've been very busy. And they've done it all without me. In 1883, the crypt for a new church had already started when Antonin Gaudi, age 31, became the architect for the project. Immediately, he changed the scale and the style of the project. He changed it from something that was purely Gothic revival into something that was more organic, unique, and personal. Now, the French Art Nouveau movement and the American Arts and Crafts movement were doing similar things in their respective countries, but no one had applied organic form to a church quite this large. Even though the church is displaced from the Gothic era by many hundreds of years, it remains truly Gothic in that it is an attempt to build the city of God on earth, to build the New Jerusalem, which is described as a city of light then the mix of Gothic and Art Nouveau results in a style fecund with nature, spiritual symbolism, mass and power that reads as intensely from a distance as it does up close. The design in Gaudi's head could be sketched, but it could not be drafted in the conventional manner. Now, sketching using hand-eye coordination with paper and pen is how architects excrete the ideas in their brain's inner vision. And in some ways, these burst from their very soul as if in prayerful communion with the talents that God has bestowed upon the artist. But his vision was so complex in form and light, mere drawings would not suffice. Without the computers that make today's bubble buildings feasible, Gaudi had to work more as sculptor than as draftsman. He carved prototypes, he cast molds, and eventually built a plaster model which has been the primary guidance for the next generation of master builders. Gaudi was killed in 1926 in a trolley car accident after completing most of one portal and only four towers. Work continued in spurts, but it was not much further along when I came upon the site a half a century later. When I did get to the building, things were very informal, so I was able to walk around the site as long as I didn't get in anyone's way. And I walked through doorless portals, and I climbed up the stone towers, and I crossed the bridges between the towers, and no one bothered me. I felt like a little boy who had climbed a tree just to think about life. And I would look down on the building, and I would see parts of it emerging from the ground, like plants in a garden, and apparently just as slowly. And from that location, I began to sketch. Sketching is also a way to ingest a building, to take it internally, 
the hand-eye coordination on pen and paper allows you to get to know the building in ways you cannot know it by just looking at a picture or even just looking at it in person. I could do another video on the construction techniques, on the use of light, both real and artificial, on the sculpture, what it means, how it's positioned. I can talk about Gaudi's pioneering construction techniques. I can do all sorts of things about the facts of the building, the how. But for this video, I really just wanted to share my amazement. You have to admire the people who started a project like this. They forged ahead. They hired the young Gaudi, and they continued on no matter what the obstacles were, even when common sense probably told them the project is just too big. This is something that I think is essential for all great architecture. It's not the how you build it so much as the why you build it. In order to build a project like this, one has to have a strong belief in God. And I think that is what is communicated through Sagrada Familia to all the hungry souls that make pilgrimage there. Such that, for me, experiencing the Catholic liturgy inside the church completed a journey that was begun 40 years earlier. And so I remember something that went through my mind that day when I sat halfway up the tower on the Passion Facade. Something that remains with me today, this older and more experienced architect. Would I be willing to dedicate the rest of my life to one building, one edifice, whose completion I may never see, just to participate with something that's that enduring? I can be packed in an hour. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.